Over the past few days, HYMC stock price skyrocketed by 900%. 900. What it means is that if you put your money only a month ago, 30 days or so, now it's worth almost 10x. So the question is, what's going to be next for this very exciting stock? In this video, we're going to talk about Highcroft Mining Holding Corp, trading under the ticker symbol HYMC. At the moment, the financial market is very volatile, and we have to be careful about which stocks to buy and what the exposure and the timing are for our trades. This video will cover the recent price action and the technical aspects of the stock. A quick heads up before we begin. Usually I cover stocks based on trading sessions that are already completed. In this video, we will take an exception on that rule and cover the stock live as it is happening. If the closing price is significantly different from where it is at the moment, we're going to make follow-up videos to reflect the new tendencies. With that being said, let's begin with today's topic. During the most recent trading session, the stock increased to $2.73 before closing the trading day at $1.32. We should pay attention to the $1.50 level nearby because it was tested as a support level that was able to hold the price over the past few months and is likely to be the most important support that is available to HYMC for the moment. Over the past 30 days, the trend of the stock has been clearly bullish as the stock is now trending on the market with retail traders wanting to get in because they want to ride the gravy train. From the perspective of a longer time frame, which is six months and above, the trend of the stock has been bullish and volatile. And from the looks of it, HYMC is likely going to regain a significant part of its previous losses. When we look at the price trend overall, it's been speeding up because the momentum is very favorable for HYMC at the moment, and it is taking off as we speak. The trading volume of HYMC has recently been 334 million shares versus an average volume of 123 million shares. Over the previous 52-week period, its price fluctuated between $0.28 cents and $4.37. The market cap of Highcroft Mining is currently at $140 million versus the enterprise value of $229 million. The difference between the market cap and the enterprise value is the premium or discount the financial market is willing to allocate to the company based on its current fundamentals, leverage, and market context. The enterprise value is the combined value of the company's assets minus the debts. If the company has a lot of debts, high leverage, or negative image amongst the shareholders, its value would be negatively impacted. With that being said, at the end of the day, this remains an estimation of the market every time it publishes its financial statements, so it's less reactive than the market cap and often more lenient as well. One key element to note regarding the enterprise value is that for many growth type companies, this is its most significant asset. Goodwill is basically an expectation of the market that the company is able to generate more profit or to have more growth than another company, partially because it has a good management, a stronger brand recognition, or a bigger online following. It is what makes a company unique compared to the alternatives. In other words, it's not a tangible asset that companies may use, but it's often the reason why some companies are perceived to be trading at a discount compared to the market cap, as the market cap is lower than the enterprise value, often because it's less reactive and may not be as generous as the enterprise value on the valuation of the goodwill. If the company goes to liquidation, the goodwill is completely gone, and we would be left with potentially less assets to share amongst shareholders and debt holders than the number on the balance sheet. When we compare the current price to its historical price fluctuations, the stock is 900% higher than the one-month low, 900% higher than the three-month low, and 900% higher than the 52-week low. On the options market, which gives us an impression of the market about where the stock price is likely going to head next, the implied volatility is 275% versus a historical volatility of 474%. The put-call volume ratio is currently 0.13. It 
It is normal for most stocks to also have a higher put option volume than what they deserve because many institutional investors hedge their long positions by buying put options. The most recent volume of options traded is 123,000 contracts a day versus the 30 day average of 35,000. Regarding the open interest, the most recent volume of open interest is 148,000 contracts versus the 30 day average of 59,000. Regarding the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own about 10% of the outstanding shares. The biggest shareholders include White Box Advisors, Nomura Holdings, and Vanguard. It's relevant to understand the shareholder composition of a company because it helps us to determine if you should hold the stock long term or to view it as a trade opportunity if the stock is mainly held by retail traders. Typically, the consensus is that there should be at least 25-30% to 30% of institutional participation for the stock to be perceived as a sound investment and not just a short-term trade. This is obviously subjected to a lot of exceptions since many great titles are also held by retail traders, but that tends to be the exception and not the rule. Let's also take a look at the short interest present in this stock, which is the amount of positions aiming to profit if the share price falls lower. Sometimes, when there are significant short interest in the total volume, this can be a sign that something more organized is going on. The current short interest is between 25-30% to 30 of the total float, most of it happening outside of the exchanges, and about 50% of the transactions are coming out of the dark pools. So overall, my opinion on high prof mining is bullish, and I believe that this tendency is here to stay for at least the foreseeable future, with occasional retracements that are possible and normal for the stock. The maximum exposure I would recommend is between 1-3% to of the portfolio, and for the immediate term, my recommendation is to buy the stock, considering its recent price action and the price levels of its supports are pretty close. I would recommend to separate the allocations in batches of 10% at a time, so that you can have enough room to purchase later as well. In this current market environment, I believe that we should be careful about taking positions and risk in the financial market in general, and in the equity market in particular. Because over the past decade or so, the financial market has been living with the help of newly created capital from QEs, resulting in a massive increase of asset prices and the corresponding decrease in their yields. And the low interest rate also contributed to reinforce this phenomenon because the financial sector would see its profit margins reduced and in turn keeps the returns of other sectors and employees low as well. At the same time, the market doesn't represent the real economy and the real economy doesn't get reflected in the price of different securities. The market is a game of supply and demand which will depend on a number of factors, not just the fundamentals. If the asset prices only depend on the fundamentals, then their performances in the Northern Hemisphere would have been more than mediocre, because things have been mostly stagnant over the years. A few things can explain why asset prices managed to remain high despite the stagnation of the underlying businesses. The first one is that over the years, there has been more money printed by different central banks to support their own economies. But because that money is distributed to banks and expected to loan to businesses to create more jobs, and that in fact there aren't that many opportunities out there, this money became capital that travels around the world and went into the huge financial melting pot. The QEs are now wrapping up in many countries, so I don't think that it'll remain as the main driving force over the next couple of years to keep the asset prices up. But it's compensated by the arrival of new capital from different regions to North America because it's perceived as a safe haven for investors. With the rising tensions around the world, this capital inflow will probably be sustained over the next couple of years, if not intensifying. The last phenomenon is the 
creation of artificial bubbles that are either supported by real market trends or completely fictional ones to allow market participants to play the game of hot potato and to either create profits or to save keep their capital. The EV sector back in 2020 is an excellent example of this. But nevertheless, what it means for the market is that the degree of uncertainty is probably going to increase over the foreseeable future, as the expectation for a recession has been building up for more than a decade, and that the economic difficulties are accumulating around the world, especially from Asia. What this means for the market and for us is that the volatility is supposed to increase over time, which will provide opportunities to make a profit or to incur losses, depending on the timing and risk management. Another thing to note for this period of time is that we have to be very careful about having shorts. It's already riskier than having longs because the losses of shorts are not limited, right? Because there's no limit in terms of how far the stock can increase. But with the increased involvement of short sellers, I believe that the stocks been shorted will have an even higher probability of getting squeezed, which will result in potentially massive losses. So we're also like observing more of an irrational behavior from market participants in the sense that very often people will choose to rush in a position, not necessarily because the fundamentals are convincing, but because there's a buildup of demand in a specific stock and people will pile in to ride the gravy train with the rest of us. That kind of behavior is highly risky and may result in losses. It's worth pointing out that in 2020 and probably in 2021, the market has never presented that many opportunities, but it was also during that same period of time that many retail traders have incurred their biggest losses. A rule of thumb is that each position should be structured so that even if they don't succeed, they don't impact the portfolio stability. Positions should begin small so that there is an opportunity to average down later. And specifically for the growth stocks, I think that 5 to 10% overall should be a healthy weight for the portfolio. And each stock should represent about 1 to like 3% of the positions. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.